Buffalo atop the AFC East, each at 6-3. It promises to be another record-breaking day for Dan Marino. With just 38 yards today, he will pass Fran Tarkenton as the NFL's all-time leader. In San Diego, first in the AFC East, New England is 3-6, and six, the same record as last year when they won their last seven to finish 10-6. and six. Chris Collinsworth has the report from Joe Robbie Stadium. Ahmad, uh, Dan Marino's assault on the record book continues here today. And his target will be your good friend, Fran Tarkington. The completions mark has already fallen. The yardage should go today. And an outside shot of the touchdown passes. So a carnival-like atmosphere here in Miami as Marino goes for the excellent production value, I thought. He gets upset if he's not in the pregame show. But we did talk to Bill Parcells yesterday, and he was unusually optimistic about his team's chances today. And that's due in part to the fact that Curtis Martin, the running back, has been the hottest running back in the league over the past three games. So now let's go back to New York and Greg Gumbel. All right, Chris and Marv, thank you both very much. The Kansas City Chiefs visit the San Diego. City crowd better than 74,000 turning out at Joe Robbie Stadium in Miami for the New England Patriots and the Miami Dolphins. Don Shula's Dolphins have won their last two following the three-game losing streak. And with a record of six and three, they are tied with Buffalo on top of the AFC East. Bill Parcells' Patriots come off last week's win over the Jets, but at three and six, the window of hope closing in in their efforts to duplicate last season's stunning turnaround, which led to a playoff first. Hi, everybody. I'm Marv Albert, along with Chris Collinsworth, and the Dolphins certainly feel they are very much back on track and feeling much better about things with Dan Marino recovering from uh, the knee and hip surgery. Boy, during that three-game losing streak, everybody in Miami just so down on the team and on Don Shula in particular. But I think it's important to remember that while Dan Marino has been in there at quarterback, the Miami Dolphins have only lost one football game, and today Marino continues his assault on the record book, and by days in, he should be the all-time passing leader in NFL history. And Chris, it's been a year of disappointment for the New England Patriots. The injury hit Drew Bledsoe has not been able to break out, but it's been rookie Curtis Martin out of Pitt, the running back who has done so well and has emerged as the offensive star for the Patriots. And if the Patriots are going to make a run here in the second half of the season, they have to establish a little more balance on the offensive side of the ball. And certainly Curtis Martin has given them that. Over the past three games, he has been the hottest back in the National Football League, even ahead of Emmett Smith, despite the fact Emmett just had two games there. But you look down the list there at number three, Bernie Parmalee also uh, establishing the running game for the Miami Dolphins. So both sides of the football, they're beginning to run it. Miami has won the toss, and they will receive the Miami Dolphins, who come off the Sunday night victory in San Diego, beating the Chargers 24 to 14. Their first win in San Diego since October of 1978. In fact, Don Shula said he was saving his postgame speech since the year <laughs> 1978. And that is Brian Wagner who has replaced Pat O'Neill in the kickoff and punting department. Man who's been with five NFL teams, including a short stint with New England last year with the Chargers. He'll kick away to the combination of O.J. McDuffie and Randall Hill. Hill. He is stopped up at the 25-yard line. It's a 19-yard return. And here is Dan Marino and the Miami Dolphins getting ready to go to the offense. A look at Richmond Webb, Keith Sims, Tim Ruddy, Chris Gray, and Billy Milner for the injured Ron Hellner. Billy Milner, uh, number one draft pick out of Houston. Myers and Parmalee, the running backs. Irving Fryer, the former Patriot, has just killed the Patriots. McDuffie and Green, the other receivers. A 
And when they go to three wide, Terry Kirby and Gary Clark check in. And one of the Patriots is down. It's the backup tight end, John Burke, who was involved in that uh, tackle of Hill and being helped off the field. The Dolphins open the season at 4-0, but in game five, Dan Marino sidelined with that hip injury. Bernie Kosar taking over. The Dolphins lost two more and all, losing to the Colts in overtime at New Orleans and to the Jets. But the Dolphins have won their last two over Buffalo and San Diego. And again, it appears the defense a bright spot. Absolutely. And for Dan Marino, he needs 38 yards to become the greatest passer in NFL history. As a first down at the 26-yard line. A penalty marker is thrown. As Marino completes out across the 45 to Irving Fryer. Hit by Maurice Hurst. If that holds, that's good for 20. The referee is Mike Carey. And the call against the Patriots. Offside number 55. He lined up in the neutral zone. That penalty is declined. First down. Just one-on-one -on -one coverage by Maurice Hurst and Irving Fryer making the catch. And there's an internal battle going on with the, within the Miami Dolphins team as to who will catch that record-breaking pass. 18 more yards needed to establish a record. And Irving Fryer telling us yesterday that if he catches it, he's not giving the ball back. Terry Kirby had the same thought uh, if it's a touchdown because he's trying to equal a Miami Dolphin team record scoring in six straight games. But it's to the ground and a stumble by Parmalee. Loss on the play, Bernie Parmalee. Hit down by Farrick Collins and Ted Johnson. A look at the Patriot defense. Collins playing for the injured Tim Roberts, who's out with a knee problem. Reggie White starting at the nose. Troy Barnett on the right side. The linebackers, McGinnis Brown, the rookie from Colorado Johnson, along with Slade Reynolds, first Ray Guyton in the secondary. And at the dime, Ty Law and Vernon Lewis come on. A second down and 12. Marino couldn't find anyone, and then he is intercepted. Picked off by Vincent Brown. The pass intended for Eric Green. Well, that's no way to establish any records, and what we thought was going to be a big celebration on this drive, and now all of a sudden the Patriots, a little room to celebrate. Looks like the ball may have been tipped on the play by Reggie White, and that's what set up the interception by Vincent Brown, his third of the year. And for Bill Parcells, we talked about it a little bit earlier, but he is optimistic about his team's chances today. He thinks they have an excellent chance to win. Well, he said, told us last night he's feeling a bit better about his club. The last few weeks, they have won two of the last three. Wetzel's pass could not be handled, but a penalty marker is down. Grisby, the intended receiver, Two flags have been thrown. J.B. Brown on the coverage of Vincent Brisby. And the call against the Dolphins. And these corners for Miami have been criticized by me in particular, for one, but for playing too loosely. And now J.B. Brown in position. Pass interference against the defense, number 37. The spot foul, automatic first down. Davey Brown right here on the play, and you're going to see him excellent coverage. He's all over Brisby, absolutely perfect, but just made the contact with his body before the ball got there. And that accounts for a 14-yard penalty and a first down of the 41 as Bledsoe goes deep and too far. Well, Buckley on the coverage of Will Moore, Bruce Armstrong coming off a shutout of the Jets' Hugh Douglas last week. Dave Willibaugh has played very well in uh, taking over for Jeff Delenbach, the former Dolphin, who was hit by injury, but Willibaugh has been able to remain in there. Gash, Martin, the running back, Brisbane Moore, and Coates, the receiver, when they go three wide, Beckett, and the free agent, Hassan Graham, check in. But so, is taken down. He had not been sacked the last three games. Tim Bowens comes up with his third 
sack of the year. The Patriot offensive line has lifted it. They have been shuffled recently, and they have played very well. That's exactly right, Marv, but this is an offense. It's a little surprised the way the Patriots have started this game. After last week, Curtis Martin, 170 yards on the ground, and they have dropped back and thrown the ball every single snap. Lincoln among the teams with the fewest sacks allowed. You see the penalty marker thrown as Marco Coleman jumped. Marco Coleman coming off a very strong game against the Chargers on Sunday night. Let's see, was he drawn? Offsides against the defense, number 90. He was unabated to the quarterback. Five yard penalty, repeat, third down. Unabated to the quarterback simply means that they're going to blow the whistle in that case to keep uh, another incident like the Bruce Smith and Boomer Esiason incident from happening. Coleman coming off the ball, and now in order to protect Drew Bledsoe, they're going to blow that whistle. Ordinarily, for defensive movement, they don't. It is a third and nine at the 40. And the pass was bobbled, and it is ruled incomplete. Brisbee bobbling, and apparently the ruling that the ball touched the ground as he was trying to control it. So fourth down coming up, and the punting unit will check in. Brisby's got some real problems with his hands. You can see his fingers taped together. He struggled catching the ball a week ago and still struggling. And this is Wagner. Patriots were satisfied with his work last week. And he will punt to O.J. McDuffie, who is back in the tank. It's a 40-yard punt. They'll bring it out to the 20 when we come back. Dolphins back to the offense. Dan Marino on the threshold of breaking yet another record, 18 yards away. We talked with Dan about his uh, many targets over the years. Mark Duper and Mark Clayton, he said, were his favorites. In fact, his longest career completion. This hookup with Mark Duper when Marino was a rookie back on November the 20th, 1983 against the Baltimore Colts. 85 yards to one of his favorites, Mark Duper. And Marino starting out from the 20-yard line and goes to the ground. Ernie Parmalee stopped by Ted Johnson. Ernie Parmalee earlier in the season had Humble problems has certainly been able to work his way back and has come on very strong in recent weeks. Really has. And this has been an unusual running game for the Miami Dolphins this year. Three times they've been held under 50 yards rushing. In four games, they've been over 145 yards. In the first game against the Patriots, 182 yards. So they're going to try and establish a run against this game. It is a second and six at the 24. We have no score with three minutes gone by. Marino pops it to the sideline. He has the tight end, Eric Green. Terry Ray on the stop. So that is good for 13, which means Marino is now five yards away. And boy, wouldn't they love to get Eric Green more involved in this offense. He's only had one game this season where he's caught passes for more than 41 yards. That against the Cincinnati Bengals. But he's really struggled due to some degree because of the fact that he hasn't picked up the intricacies of this offense, some of the option routes and various things. First down of the 38-yard line. Harmelin could not make the turn cut off by Vincent Brown. Interesting that uh, the Miami Dolphins are trying to run it to the right side predominantly so far in this game that right side entirely new this season Tim Ruddy at center Chris Gray at the right guard and Billy Milner now the rookie at the right tackle Maybe they're just trying to go against the trend that they've established in some prior games Dolphins very pleased with the play of Milner last Sunday night against the uh, Chargers he has taken over for the starter Ron Heller Reno changing the play on the second and nine and throwing sideline and he has the record Irving Flyer on the catch, Dan Marino has now thrown for more yards than anyone else in the history 
of the National Football League. That is Dan Sr. and the rest of the Marino family. Forty-seven thousand and nine to pass by Fran Tarkenton. Chris, this one of those records coming into the game you know it's just a question of when but still a lot of emotion on the sideline it really is and the record that dan says means the most to him is touchdown passes still five away from that but this is certainly an amazing market boy is he connected with a lot of different guys over the year 54 different receivers have been a part of this record the list including 32 men no longer playing. Mark Duper, as you saw, heading the list, followed by Mark Clayton. It's a group that includes a couple of Browns, Tom and Andre, Gary and Robert Clark, Mike and Ronnie Williams. It has two current broadcasters, at least eight guys who have actually spent time in jail, and at least three who have filed for bankruptcy. Now, Joe Rose and Jimmy Cephalo were the two broadcasters I, right. I mentioned. Rose, a tight end, Cephalo, wide receiver. They were not among those in jail. I'm sure they're happy to hear Today. that. Today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, chilly. And now we're set to resume. Marino with a first and ten at the 48-yard line. This time to the other side. And has a two-yard advance tripped up by Vincent Brown. You know, Marv, in 1983, there were five quarterbacks drafted ahead of Dan Marino. Almost hard to believe now. He grew up in South Oakland in a section of Pittsburgh. Would often go to church in his football uniform. He played for the church team. He said the cheerleaders sat on one side of the pews, and they, the team sat on the other, and they said their prayers and then went right to the field, which was like a couple of weeks away. But he has certainly been one of the most feisty, one of the most competitive people ever to put on a uniform. Bill Parcells was touching on that last night. I think that is what he admires most. He's probably those flying as he was tripped up. Short pickup. Ricky Reynolds, the uh, left corner, getting a piece of Bernie Parmalee. Once again, trying to run to their right side. And uh, they've established it a little bit. Chris Gray pulling out and leading the way, but uh, nice heads up tackle there by Ricky Reynolds. Marcel's telling us last night that it's important that your quarterback is a fighter. He said we would have loved to have had the opportunity to coach Marino. He feels that you know, they have the same type of, of personality. He likes the way Marino, a la Phil Sims, would get in people's faces. I know a lot of players don't necessarily appreciate that. Marino's pass is completed. For a first down, he has Fryer once again. Sideline pattern in front of the extra defensive back, Ty Law. And Irving Fryer hasn't been particularly pleased with the way that he's been getting used, at least until last week's game. In the first two games, he had four touchdown catches. Nice job dragging the feet. The next six games, no touchdown passes. He finally caught one last week. He's had some problem with his knees and he hasn't been completely healthy but uh, he said it wasn't that they just weren't throwing me the football Irving with his third catch of his first quarter and a first down at the New England 37 Reno receiving the time finding Connelly and he is pushed out of bounds right up the marker Ted Johnson made the stop good drive here by the Dolphins we have 827 remaining in the first quarter with no score Marino again able to move the chains uh, another first down for Marino who is five of six here at the start 63 yards and he has the ninth play of the drive coming up so he hasn't had a ball hit the ground yet somebody's got everyone right? including Vincent Brown That's right. first down at the 27 yard line play fake and Marino able to complete 
beautiful flip over the middle to Connolly, who sets up a first and goal. Slade and Ray on the tackle of Bernie Parmalee. Great job there by Bernie Parmalee. His job to check the protection coming out. Then when his man doesn't come, you see Vincent Brown dropping back into coverage. He just slips out of the backfield, and Dan Marino loves hitting those backs coming out of the backfield. And that's what most young quarterbacks won't do. They won't be patient enough and just give what the defense gives them. Flyer left, Clark right, Flyers on the wing. And again, it's Parmel. Inside the five. Submarine by the strong safety, Terry Ray. And one of the things that the Dolphins have been able to do this year offensively is score touchdowns on the ground. 11 touchdowns rushing, second only to the Dallas Cowboys. And now you can't just sit back and play against Dan Marino in the passing game. That's what Don Shula wanted, a little more balance offensively. Second and goal at the two. 11 play of the drive. Dolphins with the double tight end, Ronnie Williams in motion. Play action, Marino looking right, and then threw it away. Everyone covered. Good job by the Patriots. Marino tried to go backside to Ronnie Williams, and Ronnie Williams was caught up in traffic and not working very hard to get free. I wouldn't be surprised if Dan doesn't make a comment to him coming back to the huddle. Just sort of got tied up in traffic and then sort of gave up on the play, and that's what forced Marino to throw it away. It is a... Burr and goal at the two. Now Myers lined up in the backfield again. Williams in motion. Kirby. And that was blown dead. Vincent Brown with the reps on Kirby. And the crowd reacts with the fourth and goal at the one with the Dolphins settling for three. Chris Gray is going to pull out and around, but he's going to miss Vincent Brown right there, and that's the reason that the play was stopped. He went after the wrong guy. He went after the safety, Myron Guyton, instead of Vincent Brown. So here is Pete Stoyanovich with a 19-yard attempt. And the Dolphins with a 3-0 lead. A penalty marker was thrown. Well, the call against Miami. Hmm. Makes this one a little more interesting. Holy on the offense, number 51. 10-yard penalty, repeat, fourth down. Well, that is Brian Cox, and they'll move it back for a longer field goal attempt. Repeat Stoyanovich, who on the season has hit 19 of of 24. He has missed one from this range, though. So this is a 29-yard attempt coming up. The other Brian, left. Yeah. Brian Cox with a hook on the corner. John Kidd putting it down. And Stoyanovich He's missed, missed two. right here again. Well, Pete Stoyanovich has had his difficulties this season, but the hold by Cox turns out to be costly. By Compact Computer Corporation. By Little Caesars Pizza, where you always get two great pizzas for one low price. And by Beechwood Age Budweiser, the king of beers. This Bud's for you. A holding penalty on Brian Cox costing Stoyanovich the field goal he hit from 19 and then missed from 29 yards away Curtis Martin getting the call Tim Bowens Thank on you. the stop so the Dolphins have the ball for six and a half minutes on that drive 13 plays six and a half minutes and they come up empty and for Brian Cox he's going to hear about it when he goes and talks to those school kids he still does it every two every uh, Tuesday on his day off and but during that losing streak, the kids were telling him that you stink. Very subtle, huh? Yeah. On the second and eighth, Wilson completes to Brisbane for the first down. 
That is good for 10 yards. Got to give Vincent Brisby some credit for just going out there and playing. He essentially uh, got that hook on his left hand, and, and he's having to just sort of knock everything down and then try to double catch it. But at least he's out there, and they really can't afford to have him out of the lineup. They have no deep threat whatsoever if he's not in there. It is a first down at the 32-yard line. Timing pattern tossed by Bledsoe. It is caught. The question is, was he inbound? Caught by Curtis Martin. Yes, he was. It's good for 27. What an incredible catch here by Curtis Martin to keep his feet in bounds, reaches up for the football, catches it at the highest point, and I believe that's a good call by the officials. Beautifully thrown ball here by Drew Bledsoe. He threw that thing about uh, 20 yards from where Curtis Martin eventually caught it, and he got those feet down. Great play by the Patriots. And New England with a first down at the Miami 41-yard line. It is a cloudy, overcast, 74-degree day here in the Miami area. As you see Michael Stewart being checked. Michael Stewart, such a significant player against the Patriots, shut down Ben Coates in that earlier meeting back in September. He really did, and this is a big blow right now for the Miami Dolphins because he covers Coates one-on-one. -on -one. Let's see if Bledsoe goes to him now. Play fake. Bledsoe throwing incomplete intended for Brisbane, who was covered by Cox. The last time the Patriots beat Miami was a 1993 season-ending overtime victory. Actually, Marino was sidelined by injury. Scott Mitchell was the quarterback for the Dolphins. The Dolphins have won three straight, 12 of the last 13 against the New England Patriots. And as you saw, Bledsoe uh, has had his difficulties. Second down and 10 at the 41. It's the second back coming through Martin, who has bottled up. And Drew Bledsoe, over the last three games against the Miami Dolphins, of course, that one game last year here, the shootout with Dan Marino, but really since then has really been struggling to get anything going. 345 remaining in this first quarter. The Patriots and Dolphins are scoreless. Emily Marker down as Bledsoe is able to complete. Hassan Graham on a crossing pattern brings to the 11 where he is tackled by Troy Vincent. But there is a flag down. And they will bring it back. Boy, what a shot in there that time by Drew Bledsoe. Holy on the offense, number 76, 10 yard penalty, repeat third down. With William Roberts with the hold. Roberts right there. Very difficult assignment working against Jeff Cross. That's where they ran the football last week, though, against the Jets to that left side behind William Roberts and Bruce Armstrong. Back to a third and 20 at midfield. And Bledsoe again goes deep. This time intended for Brisbane. Covered by Brown. And the Miami defensive unit hearing it from the crowd as Brian Wagner comes in to punt. Yeah, but they were lucky on that drive because that pass to Hassan Graham could have put the Patriots in great position. But the Patriots continue to have their problems. They just can't find a way to get the thing in the end zone anymore. Wagner handling that low snap and pops it to McDuffie who lets it bounce. And a nice bounce for the Patriots. It is downed at the one. High Law with a good play on a 50-yard punt. Welcome back to Joe Robbie Stadium in Miami. The sun beginning to crack through. Marv Albert with Chris Collinsworth. Just under three minutes remaining in the scoreless first quarter. And the Dolphins.
offense starting out on their three on line. And go to the crowd, finally able to find some running room. Ted Johnson on the stop. So that puck by Wagner, good for 50. It was it was down by law. They they marked it at the three. Originally appeared to be the one. And Pomley runs it out to the nine. It's a second down and four. Long drive by the Dolphins. Ends up in seven for a field goal. Stoyanovich hits it from 19, but the hold on Cox wiped it out, and Stoyanovich missed from 29 yards. That's the closest we've come to a score. Again, it's Pomley stopped by Brown. Oakland jumping out in front of the Giants early. Oakland may well be the best team right now in the AFC. If you could get an argument on that here in Miami, but uh, they're a football team that physically they have it all. So, football time at seven coming into today. Buffalo and Miami at six up and three down on top of the AFC East. It's a third and two from the 11th. complete off a nice catch by Gary Clark. Gary Clark in his 11th NFL season. He's 33 years old. That is good for 13 yards as Clark makes his first catch of the day. And the key to the play was how much time Dan Marino had to get this thing off. Gary Clark in working against the zone coverage. That takes a good three or four seconds to get in the middle of the field between the linebackers and you can't run that route without good offensive line play. Miami with a first down at their 29. Myers in motion. Harmony has the open. Leg is tossed. Harmony with a burst for the first down pending the penalty marker. Harmony running for 16, but it will not hold. And I believe they're going to get Keith Byers for holding against Willie McGinnis. Byers had a pin block on the outside. Holding on the offense, number 79. 10-yard penalty, repeat, first down. Sorry about that, Keith. Billy Milner, the rookie, is the one that got caught for the hold. And he's a guy, Billy Milner's a guy that comes in there for Ron Heller, and Heller's had plenty of injury problems. A guy with all the talent in the world actually quit football at one time playing for the University of Houston and said he just didn't have his heart in it anymore. Kim Helton, the coach out there, gave him a couple of days off to think about it, changed his mind, and in no time at all was the number one draft pick. Some of the NFL teams considered it to be an injury risk. Right. And a college career battered by injury. Marino did well to get that off. Throwing it behind Byers. Crowd reacting, looking for a penalty on the uh, Patriots. A relatively calm Dan Marino so far in this one. Maybe he's still in a happy mood because of the record, but that won't last very much longer. He, he's a guy that he will get in the face of those guys on his football team. And Parcells was even talking about that last night. He said, I really like the way he competes. I'm not so sure that his own teammates like it very much. I like the way he goes after them. Marino, 7 of 10, 94 yards. He has been picked off once. Second down and 20. Look out. Marino gets it away to Byers. And Byers works to the 23-yard line. Keith Byers coming off his most effective game of the season last week. Had a couple of carries. Caught six passes for 55 yards. And pointed out that he was uh, very happy that he has been able to be so productive, particularly when you look back at this past Monday, the one-year anniversary of the injury as uh, Keith uh, continues with that consecutive streak. Keith Byers making it back from knee surgery, went down in game six last season, and his career a question mark. He has come back very well. That's the end of the first quarter. A look back to recent meetings between the Patriots and the Dolphins and their last get-together here at Joe Robbie, September of 1994. Bledsoe with the 62-yard pass to Ben Coates. That made it 21-10 New England. Coates had 161 reception yards on the day, a career high. And Marino with a 26-yard pass to keep Jackson to cut it to 21-18. But 
Irving Fryer had a big game against his uh, former club and the final score in a shootout 39 35 Miami both quarterbacks combining for nine touchdowns nearly 900 yards but uh, since then they played twice and the Patriots have been handcuffed in the offensive department that is incomplete Ricky Reynolds on the coverage of O.J. McDuffie and the uh, crowd was looking for an interference. Dan Marino is lucky that one didn't get picked off. Ricky Reynolds had his back turned to the play and it looked like Marino's arm may have been hit and had Reynolds seen the flutter ball coming, he may well have taken it. Just couldn't follow through on the ball. And it leads to the first punt of the day by the Dolphins. John Kidd has had a solid season. David Meggett. Meggett with some shifty moves, but well covered by the Dolphins. And a Miami player is down. 44-yard punt and a three-yard return. Wayne Dotson. On the stop. Pretty gutsy catch that time by Meggett. Sean Hill was literally hovering over the top of him as that punt was coming down and Meggett refusing to fair catch. Sean Hill come in from the right side of your screen and literally <laughs> just be hanging over the top of him and he still caught it and got away from Sean Hill. You've got to give him room to catch the football and Hill unable to time that one out. That could have been an explosion on the field. Ethan Albright is the uh, injured Dolphin player, backup offensive lineman. Well, tonight, an all-new dramatic rendition, I'm sure. And that's followed by an all-new Hope and Gloria, NBC Tonight. I assume she had to get out of that bed in order to do this part. What was it, like a year or something she stayed in that? We'll, we'll deal with that after the game, Chris. <laughs> you want to discuss that here? No. no. All right, we'll be back with more from Miami in a moment. Well, nothing doing to this point for New England. Curtis Martin, who had 166 yards last week against the Jets, has rushed twice for two yards. That has been it. Patriots have passed six times for only 37 yards. They start out from the 36. The hole opens up this time for Martin, who picks up four, stopped at the 40 by Hollier. And finally now, the Patriots going back to that left side. They had a huge day running the football against a Jet defense that held Marshall Falk the week before to just 30 yards rushing in 15 carries. And so maybe Bill Parcells wanted to come out, show the pass a little bit, now get back to that running game. It's a second and six. Trying to smash his way off the left side, but met by Chuck Klingbeil. Opening minute of play in the second quarter. The Patriots and the Dolphins are scoreless. Chris, you think back to the earlier meeting, what a, what a difference two months make when they got together back on September the 10th. Both teams were 1-0. New England had entered the game having won their last eight regular season games. Marcells at the time worried about Curtis Martin getting a big head. He right. called him one game wonder. The reporters uh, after that uh, first game, here's Bledsoe. And he completes. Yeah. Megan has the first down. That's good for 13. Singleton and Hollier combined on the stop. And that's the first time that David Megan has touched the football today. Megan's going to come right out, out of the backfield here. And when they can work Dave Meggett into the ball game and get him one-on-one -on -one against any linebacker in football, that's Dwight Hallier he was working against, probably the best of the Miami linebackers in coverage. On Bledsoe just fires it away as he was pressured by Singleton. And the crowd looking for a call on that one. Right here, let's uh, check in, though, with Greg Gumbel. All right, Marv, quarterback Jeff Blake of the Cincinnati Bengals has been bitten by the interception bug lately. This is his eighth in five years. It cost in five games. It costs him against the Oilers. Eddie Robinson returns 49 yards for a touchdown. They are tied at 10 in the second quarter in Houston, Marv. 
All right, Greg, crowd still reacting, wanting a illegal grounding call on, on Bledsoe, fired it to the sideline. Second down and 10 on the draw. It is Martin, Curtis Martin, works his way to the 25-yard line. A first down and more Atkins and Stewart able to make the stop. So Martin has exploded after the slow start. That's good for 19 more. And one of the things you like to do with this Miami defensive line, get them coming up the field, slip the draw in there. That time, Steve Emman unable to come off of his block. Huge hole up the middle. And now, now the Patriots beginning to establish that running game. First and 10, and Bledsoe has the pass drop. Drop by Brisbane. That's got to hurt. Bledsoe was right on target. Well, the key when you have a bad finger or a bad hand is try to catch the ball in your body and just sort of wrap your hands around it. And for Vincent Brisby, he's letting it hit his body, but his hands aren't close enough to make the catch. Drew Bledsoe telling us uh, last night it's been such a frustrating season. He doesn't know what kind of game to expect week after week. There's been no consistency. He's talking about himself and the rest of his team. Are. As Bledsoe is taken down. Chased by Trace Armstrong. Second sack of the game for the Dolphins. That's three and a half for the season for Armstrong, who has been a terrific pickup. You know, Trace Armstrong, everybody talked about the fact uh, that Dan Marino was out, Eric Green was out, but I think one of the big reasons the Dolphins lost those three games in a row, Trace Armstrong was out, really hurt their pass rush. They gave up a lot of touchdown passes. Don Shula telling us yesterday that was a major factor. It's a third and eight out of the 24-yard line. Lexo with the protection, and Frisbee able to hang on. For a first down, J.B. Brown on the cover, good for 12. J.B. Brown in position once again. Bump and run, man-to-man -man all over the field. And you really can't play it a whole lot better than that. Bledsoe just stuck that one in there. I'll never forget the first conversation I ever had with Bill Parcells about Drew Bledsoe, though. He said that, Chris, if this was before the very first game he ever played, he said, this guy does things throwing the football that I have never seen before. I said, come on, Bill, never seen before. I said, I'm telling you, he does things throwing it you have never seen. Good drive by the Patriots. First down for the 12, and again, Martin with a surge reaching to the 5. Stewart and Atkins combined to make the stop. Ben Coates with a nice block coming off of the motion. And Ben hasn't been doing a great job catching the football this year, but you can see that a lot like Eric Green, an excellent job in run block. It's a second and three down at the five. That is Coates in motion. Martin. And Martin is stopped. Strong tackle by the strong safety Michael Stewart, who earlier bruised his uh, hamstring, but he's okay, obviously, and back on the field. What a huge collision on that play with Sam Cash. I believe it was against Brian Cox, and you start setting up those isolation plays where it's just the fullback against the linebacker. Well, actually, that was uh, against Chris Singleton, and those two guys are just going to go smashing into each other and you talk about smash mouth football that's a part of the equation with Bill Parcells they are measuring to see if the Patriots picked up the uh, first down looks to be inches shy it'll be a third and inches for the first down the ball inside the three <laughs> only one rushing touchdown so far for the Patriots this season and if I'm not mistaken, that one came uh, to beat the Cleveland Browns, and that was the first game of the year. Five minutes gone by in the second quarter. Dolphins and Patriots are scoreless. An opportunity for New England. That is for 85 in motion. Play action. Let's go throwing. Complaint. It was deflected by Atkins and Coates could not make the catch. What a brilliant play by Gene Atkins, and he just dropped the football. He set up Drew Bledsoe. Bledsoe 
Atkins made uh, Bledsoe think that he was going to cover the guy in the flat, and it goes right between his hands. A dream for a safety, and Bill Parcells knows he got away with one there. Right through his hands as the Dolphins continue to make mistakes in this game. It is fourth and inches at the three. And they are going for it. Martin is in for the touchdown. Curtis Martin driving off the left side for the score. His eighth touchdown of the season. And the Patriots are up 6 nothing. Nothing fancy here, just isolation with the fullback against the linebacker. Gash makes the block, and Martin gets in the end zone. Just their second rushing touchdown, and that's the way that Bill Parcells likes to see his guys playing football. They couldn't do that. Remember back to the first game at the end of that ball game? They couldn't stick it in from the one-yard line. Here they do. And Barr with the extra point. And it's only the second rushing touchdown that Miami has allowed. 9.41 left. Second quarter, Patriots in front, 7-0. Well, Curtis Martin on this last drive, six carries, 39 yards. Coming into today, Miami against the rush, very effective. Martin quiet in the first quarter, but able to break out with a couple of bursts in the second as New England went 12 plays, 64 yards in five minutes for the seven nothing lead the kickoff by Wacken and a panel by McDuffie and on the reverse Hill took the handoff Randall Hill taking it on the reverse from McDuffie Vernon Lewis able to haul him down and a very well executed kick return for 34 yards. And Randall Hill upset. He thought he should have gone the distance with this one. Great speed from Randall Hill. Didn't get much of a running start there. But here's a guy that can run under 4-3. Had a big catch last week. Over 50 yards. He is a pure speed receiver. Not much going over the middle. But uh, when they can get him in the open field, very dangerous. And it's a first and 10 at the 40-yard line for Dan Perino and the Dolphins. He goes to the play action. In trouble, he throws it away. And a late hit. Chris Slade with the late hit on Marino. So that draws the flag. Good call here by the officials. No question about it. Chris Slade upset. He got there. He was close, but Marino thrown the ball away. Personal foul. Roughing the passer against the defense. 15 yards. Automatic. First down. And Marv, I think that Slade would have been okay on this play had he just sort of tackled him to the ground. But when he threw the ball away and now he's going to sling him down to the ground, that's what the official saw. Slade with a good inside move and working against an excellent one in Richmond Webb. But once the ball is gone, now he throws him head first to the ground. They're going to call it every single time in this league. And a first down now at the New England 45-yard line. Probably trying to put the brakes on. And he is game tackled. Patriots all over. Bernie Parmalee, who was stopped at the line. New England Patriots coming at three and six. They were three up and six down a year ago, entering the tenth game of the season. But Drew Bledsoe telling us last night that he's only admitted to a window of hope. Patriots very cautious. And they have dug themselves a deep hole. Wins over Cleveland, Buffalo, and the Jets. Losses to Miami, San Francisco, Atlanta, Denver, Kansas City, and the one that really hurt, Carolina. Second and ten as Marino completes to Byron. And he refuses to go down. Byron Guyton great on Keith Byers, who picks up 14 for the first down. And Keith Byers essentially a wide receiver slash tight end. Patriots tried to come with a blitz, and Marino read it quickly and easily. Byron Guyton really in no position to make that play, but that's just a play that Dan Marino makes. You're going to try and blitz this guy, and you're going to get burned. There's really no reason to even try it. And Chris Ray, the starting right guard, being uh, checked over. 
We'll be right back. Amy Burt Widener has come on, replacing this man, Chris Gray, the starting right guard. Miami having its difficulties on the offensive line earlier in a special team situation. Ethan Albright suffered a sprained ligament in his left foot, and he is out the rest of the way. Marino throwing over the middle has caught the lead for the touchdown. play to Bernie Parmalee, Marino's 11th touchdown pass of the season. And the Patriots now lead 7-6. Once again, the play action fooling the Patriots. They want to come up and try and play the run. That time the linebackers reacting just too quickly. And now Stoyanovich, who earlier missed a 29-yard field goal attempt. <laughs> and missed again. Or, wait a moment, was there a whistle? That blew a dead snap. There was a false start on the offense, number 60. Five-yard penalty, retry. Whoa. So Burt Widener, who just came in the ball game, Gets his name called right away. Well, that was an ugly kick, though, by Stoyanovich. Starting slowly. He missed that 27-yarder against the Colts that would have locked up that game and now missed one under 30 yards here again today. He is 25 for 25 and point after attempts. You see Chris Gray being carted back to the locker room. Again, the attempt by Stoyanovich from deeper range and puts it through to tie the game at seven. Back to the touchdown. Marino with the play action fake to Byers. And you're going to see Vincent Brown just can't get there. It was his man. He hesitated just for a moment with the play action. That's the reason you put the play action in. And by the time that he recovered, Parmalee was behind him. Whoops. Touchdown. So now Dan Marino needs four to break the record that he covets the most for touchdown passes. Number 11 on the season for Marino. Number five for uh, Parmalee. Strong first half for Bernie Parmalee. Been an adventure for Pete Stoyanovich, who has had a superb career. There was some wondering coming into this season, Chris, how he would handle missing that 48-yard field goal against the Chargers at uh, the end of the playoff game last year. And, and if you, you wonder if there has been any lingering effect. Yeah, it could possibly. Boy, when you have an entire offseason to think about it and read about it, and he's told us that it was... Uh, one of those things that even the, the people in the restaurants and, you know, everywhere you go, the whole offseason, all of a sudden, you know, they're all bringing that one up. They're saying wide right, wide left, whatever it was, and thanks for a long offseason. It's always lovely walking into the restaurant and hearing wide left or <laughs> wide right. Megan on the return, able to break a tackle and try to circle. Gets to the 25-yard line. He went 21 on that kickoff return. We're set for an update. Let's go to Greg Gumbel. Greg? All right, Marv, at the Meadowlands, Jeff Hostetler of the Raiders against his former Giants teammates for the first time. This is a 40-yard touchdown connection with Rocket Ishmael, and it's a 10-3 Raiders lead. About four minutes to play in the first half. Raiders on top, Marv. Thank you, Greg. New England and Miami tied at seven, eight minutes to go in this First half here at Joe Robbie Stadium. As Drew Bledsoe looks at a first and 10 at the 27 yard line. On the play fake. Able to complete to Gash. The fullback Sam Gash. Stopped by the strong safety Michael Stewart for Gash. His first reception of the day. Sam Gash in his fourth NFL season out of Penn State, an eighth-round draft pick back in uh, 92. For the most part, a hard-nosed blocker, and 
considered to be a reliable receiver out of the back. Yeah, but they really miss Kevin Turner, who went uh, via the free agent market to Philadelphia, and he caught over 50 passes a year ago, and Gash has not been that kind of a weapon. Second down and five, and it is incomplete. Intended for Coates, who has not caught a pass. And Ben Coates has been struggling with an ankle problem to some degree, but it's really very difficult. You'll see him coming in motion across the field. Very difficult to understand why this guy that was such a factor in the league catching footballs over the past couple of years has more or less been a non-factor this year. I think he misses Kevin Turner and Michael Timpson to some degree, but this has not been the same guy catching the ball. It's a third and five. And Letzel going deep for Brisbane. That was beautifully timed as Brisby used the speed on Vincent. It's a 28-yard pass play. And Vincent not too happy. He felt that he got pushed on the play, but this is the second time now that we've seen the Patriots complete one down the sideline going deep. And immediately after the play, you'll see Troy Vincent go right to the official and claim that he was pushed off. Getting back to the subject of coach we were talking about it last night with Drew Bledsoe. He said, I don't know if he was serious, he felt people are holding coats more frequently. And this season, he also mentioned the absence of, of Turner. Martin, short pickup for Curtis Martin, stopped by Tim Bowens. And certainly the, the ankle problem has been a contributing factor. He may be more hurt than he is admitting. Barb, if you're going to play tight end in this league, you're going to get held. You're going to get held, so you don't worry about it. You go out there and you play your game. But the one thing that Parcells has always had in this offense is that fullback tight end game. And so if you can't catch the ball, you get a few bites. <laughs> now you got to burn off some energy somewhere. There was Marco Coleman involved in Colts. Martin off a big hole, spinning his way inside the 20, refusing to go down. A brilliant run by the rookie from Pittsburgh, Curtis Martin. 22 more for Martin. And Curtis Martin is doing more running the ball against this Miami defense than anybody I've seen all year. They have not allowed a single back this year to rush for more than 75 yards. And Curtis Martin is just sort of having his way out here. Beautiful spin move in the middle of the play to get away from Troy Vincent. Or is he showing me something? A first down at the 15. Martin has run 63 yards on, on 10 carries. And now to the outside. Question several weeks ago was Curtis tiring. We asked him that uh, last night. He said actually he feels now that he is getting stronger and stronger. Yeah, and he said surprisingly after last week and carrying the ball 34 times, he said it's the best I've felt the entire season and 70 yards already today. In the games that he has rushed for 100 and 100 yards, the Patriots are three and zero, oh, so they are moving in the right direction today. Second down and three at the eight. And as Martin again, this time a short pickup. Curtis Martin had an injury hit career at Pitt. As a result, he was a third round draft pick from Philadelphia as part of the compensation for the signing of fullback Kevin Turner. Watch the collision here between Chris Singleton and Sam Gash, the fullback. Singleton just takes Gash and slams him back on his tail, and that's the reason there was nothing there that time for Curtis Martin. Sam Gash, a very good blocker, but he got destroyed on that one. Patriots with a third and one at the six-yard line. Eighth play on the drive. And Martin got the call. Dolphins feel they have stopped, and Michael Stewart very quick to the ball carrier. Now the Dolphins also indicating that they knocked the ball free. Patriot offensive unit remaining on the field. This close though, that's fourth down. So now a decision time for Bill Parcells. I think he goes for it here. You're three and six on the season. You're going nowhere fast, playing against Dan Marino. Give that sucker to Curtis Martin. Let's go. So right here, we'll go to a commercial break. Back in a moment. 
Well, while we were away, Brian Cox was hit with an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty going at the officials. Apparently, he felt that the Dolphins had wrestled the ball away from Curtis Martin, that the ball was on the ground covered up uh, by the Dolphins. The officials said no, and on the unsportsmanlike conduct uh, call, apparently Cox threw his helmet toward the Miami bench, and now the uh, Patriots do have the first down. It's first and goal at so, the three. So no decision whatsoever. The ball is going to pop out, but it was after Martin hit the ground. Good call by the officials, but that's what Brian Cox was so upset about. But regardless, you can't do that. It was fourth down and one, and I like Brian Cox, but he is killing this football team out here today. You can't make those kind of uh, individual kinds of moves. I don't care how upset you are. This is too important. The Dolphins have a lot going. His holding penalty earlier cost Stoyanovic a field goal. He had a kick again, and he missed. 29 yards away. First and goal at the three. And the Dolphins able to smother Curtis Martin. Michael Stewart again involved on that uh, tackle. That's the Dolphins defensive coordinator, Tom Olivadotti. And this uh, defense has done a remarkable job against the run this year, but already the Patriots with one rushing touchdown and now trying to stick in another one. But that was a big first down stop. Now you can maybe get uh, Bill Parcells to be forced to become a little more one dimensional and have to throw the football here. It is a second and goal at the four as they line up tight. First in motion on the sweep. Mark following Gash. Trying to cut inside. Picked up a couple. Bill Parcells telling us uh, last night that he planned to attack, go right at Miami, which he did. He went to the air. Curtis Martin did not see the ball much in the first quarter, but the plan has changed here in the second, and Martin has run now overall 15 times for 73 yards. You know, Marv, I really think the plan was to come out and show pass so that he could come back to the running game, and they have certainly established that running game, and I think Bill Parcells right here is just going to play a little power football. Bird and goal at the one. Again, Burke in motion. Play action. Letso off the wall, and it's blocked. Jeff Cross getting a piece of it. And now decision time once again for Bill Parcells, and I think they still go. I'm really shocked that they didn't try and run it there. If, in fact, this was four down territory, you have two cracks from the one-yard line, and uh, I guess Bill Parcells deciding to go for the field goal. It's a long one, but if you go twice, if you make up your mind to go for it twice in this situation, you gain half a yard at a crack. So Matt Barr, 14 of 16 this season, will attempt a 19-yard field goal. The quarterback Scott Zolak put it down, and it, it hit the crossbar. Wow. Well, both kickers will not look to think back. Tim Bowens right here is going to get his hand up and block this kick, but there was no penetration on the play whatsoever. <laughs> Think doing. And then everybody remembering Leon Lay, get away, get away, get away. Yes. Good old, good old. Bart has never got that ball up in the air. I mean, that thing never got more than about five or six feet off the ground. So the Dolphins take over, and they go to the re reverse with McDuffie. Mr. First Down himself, O.J. McDuffie, has picked one up. Ricky Reynolds on the stop. So a 19-yard field goal attempt by Barr missed. It's the shortest miss of his career. But the highest bounce of his career. Absolutely. Reverse on the play, and McDuffie out there. Was that Marino throwing a block? Well, he didn't hit anybody, but he laid down somewhere near someone. And a first down at the 31-yard line. Parmalee. Out to the 40, just shy of a first down, met by Maurice first. Two minutes to go in this first half. Well, a hole not available for Brian Cox, so he does the next best thing as he hides yes. from Coach Shula. Well, coming up, Dick could do if he had the chance. Coming up at halftime, the Domino's Pizza NFL on NBC halftime 
report and uh, joining Greg in the studio Mike Ditka Joe Montana they'll have scores and highlights Will McDonough with news from around the NFL it's a second and one at the 40 just under two minutes remaining in the first half and Byers with a rare carry picks up the first down Mark, this is a key moment in the ball game right now. Obviously, Phil Parcell is disappointed not getting any points out of that last drive. Now, if Marino can convert on the other end, a lot of momentum going in at the half. And Marino throwing deep sideline and overthrows the intended receiver, O.J. McDuffie, with Ricky Reynolds alongside. You know, the one thing that Dan Marino does so well is he gets rid of the football. During that losing streak with Kozar and McGuire in there, they were sacked once every 16 times. Dan Marino only gets sacked once every 37 passes, and he just does not take the sacks. As soon as somebody gets near, he gets rid of the football, gets it out of there, and that's a key part of this offense. And the Dolphins have had to reshuffle the offensive line. It's now Webb and Milner at the tackles with uh, Sims and Widener at the guard, Ruddy at center. Gray, we're told, being x-rayed as he hurt his left ankle earlier that was tipped away the pass broken up by Ted Johnson a leaping Ted Johnson was able to get a, a piece of it pass intended for Irving Fryer wouldn't have wanted to try and slide a phone book underneath him after that jump but uh, I mean, it didn't, oh. look, didn't look like Michael Jordan now wait a minute look at this you do a lot of basketball yes four, there was no, that three, wasn't bad. four inches not at bad. least that's not too bad Ted goes, what, 6'3", 240 pounds. He had a time perfect. Yes, that's, that he did. That's what Ted would tell us. Third and 10 at the 43. A minute 25 remaining of the half. Reno, after stepping up, is able to complete to clock. And has a first down. Terry Ray, the strong safety on the tackle. It's a 20-yard advance. How would you like to have a guy as your third wide receiver who has caught 50 passes or more 10 times in the National Football League? Gary Clark has just been a tremendous weapon as that third wide out. Kind of reminds you a little bit of Nat Moore and his ability to find those open zones. And here, absolutely wide open on the play. Looks like Ty Law chased the guy deep and left the open zone underneath. Dan Marino requesting a timeout, so both the Patriots and Dolphins with two timeouts remaining. It's on Dan Marino, 12 of 18, 177 yards, one touchdown and one interception by Vincent Brown. And he needs three to tie, four to pass Fran Tarkenton to completely wipe Fran out of the record books. <laughs> Because if uh, Ahmad had caught a few of those balls yeah. uh, over his career, then it would have been okay. He still had the lead. Blaming it on Ahmad Rashad. Marino is taken down. First sack of the day for the Patriots. Willie McGinnis on the sack, and Dan Marino shaken up. And a big sigh of relief from this crowd when Marino got to his feet. Again, it's coming around the corner. Marino absolutely just never saw him. Probably got a little bit of the wind knocked out of him. And the right to the hurry up. Second down and 17. And Marino completing to Kirby. Stretching his way inside the 35-yard line. Hurst and Lewis on the stop. The clock is running. Down to 50 seconds. Miami with two timeouts left. And now they will use another timeout. You can see Danny's still trying to catch his breath out there. Well, those are the ones as a quarterback just so tough to handle. You just, it's amazing that you don't see the guy when he's coming right at your face. You expect the ones from your back, but the ones that come right in your face, a lot of times you're looking downfield and you absolutely just don't see them coming right at you. Willie McGinnis coming up with his fourth sack of the season. Here's a uh, look back at October the 8th against the Indianapolis Colts where he took that uh, hard hit. 
And uh, their team doctor, Dr. Pete Delicato, was telling me that they actually put an incision in his hip and stuffed gauze down inside and then closed it back up. That's how much bleeding there was in that hip. Well, that caused the hip injury. He's also back from arthroscopic surgery on his right knee. And look at what he has faced uh, here in the first half. 48 seconds to go of the half. And Marino completes it good to Clark. Sideline pattern by Clark. Bumped out by Ray and Gary Clark has been so effective. That's his third catch. This one good for 17. And Gary Clark as a third wide receiver overmatching Vernon Lewis, the nickelback for the Patriots. That's something they're going to exploit. You know, you just don't think that you, you're going to see a guy like Gary Clark as their third wide out. So you got your third corner out there and you feel fairly comfortable about it on most teams. But with Gary Clark, boy, is he dynamic. Now Hill is to the left and Fryer right. First down at the 16-yard line. 41 seconds to go on the half. Marino. Very close to the line of scrimmage. Obvious confusion on that play and may have been across the line as a flag is thrown. Yes. Or was that intentional grounding? I think they're going to call intentional grounding on the play and that's a bit of a surprise because there was a running back know exactly who it was over there in that vicinity and I think that's what Dan saw and sort of tried to flip it and then the running back stopped I don't know how close you have to be but there was a there's no foul for intentional grounding the quarterback was out of the pocket well once you're out of the pocket all you have to do is just get it to the line of scrimmage and then there is no intentional grounding you could see him looking over there, and that was Terry Kirby that he saw out of the corner of his eye. I don't know if he was out of the pocket or not, though. I don't know exactly. Usually the pocket is defined by the two tight ends. Uh, whether they're there or not, you take lines going straight back, and it looked like he was within that two tight end area. And, and very close to the line of scrimmage, but stopped just short. That would have been an illegal forward pass. The officials are still discussing the play we have 34 seconds to go on the half and a second and 10 at the 16 and Marv I think they're talking about exactly what you said that okay it's not intentional grounding but it was still an illegal forward pass because he was over the line of scrimmage that was my first thought but then in seeing the replay it was difficult to be able to tell from the angle and now they have to kind of replay it in their heads right I mean, I don't even think they got to that discussion because of the fact that they thought it was instant replay. And you see <laughs> Bill Parcell saying he threw it Correction. as he stepped the over the line. Goes in the pocket, intentional grounding, 10-yard penalty, and lost it down, third down. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's got to be the right call because he was within that two tight end area. Now you get back to the point that I was making originally, though. Line of scrimmage now at the 16-yard line right here. Well, I can't draw a straight line. See if Dan Marino gets back over the 16. Nope, it, no. wa it wasn't over the line of scrimmage. But he was clearly within the two tight end box. And Don Shula, not happy at all. Bring that one up on the competition committee. Well, it sets it back to a third and 20 at the 26-yard line. But there was a receiver fairly close to that area, and you could see Dan look out of the corner of his eye and see Terry Kirby and then just not be able to get him the ball. Make it a second and 20 at the uh, 26, with 34 seconds left in the half. Marino going short range and almost intercepted on the deflection. Mike Jones got a piece of it. And Marino trying to drop this ball in over the top, but Mike Jones doing a good job getting his hands up. Knocking that football away, and now the Patriots starting to get a little pressure. But let me go all the way back now and finalize the chapter on the intentional grounding. I don't think that was intentional grounding. I think that he saw Terry Kirby out of the corner of his eye, and since he wasn't over the line of scrimmage, should have been no call. Third and 20 at the 26. 
Marino completes to Kirby inside the 20-yard line. Rock is running, 20 seconds to go. Vernon Lewis with the spinning tackle. And now the clock is stopped. Dolphins will use their final timeout. Clock stopped with 18 seconds left in the half. The Patriots and the Dolphins are tied at seven. And when we resume, it'll be a fourth and 12 down at the 18-yard line. So this about a 35 or 36-yard field goal attempt for a kicker who I would think has done a lot of thinking after missing the 29-yard field goal after hitting on a 19 that was wiped away by the hole called on Brian Cox. You know, Stojanovic has actually been more accurate from the 30 to 50-yard lines than he has from in tighter. This is a 36-yard attempt by Snap, and he line drives it right through. Well, that has to feel good for Pete Stoyanovic as he gives the Dolphins a 10-7 lead with 14 seconds remaining of the first half. Miami Dolphins with uh, an eye on the scoreboard. Buffalo playing Atlanta. Buffalo and Miami at six and three, leading the AFC East. Indianapolis five and four. Then New England at uh, three and six coming into today. I saw that Buffalo team last week. Boy, do they have a defense, especially that defensive line with Bryce Pop and Bruce Smith and Phil Hansen and. Cornelius Bennett with the hamstring pull last week. Don't know if he's playing in this one or not today. But for that guy, he's been uh, having a rough go of it as well. Coach Don Shula, he was telling us the other day that the criticism that he's taken this year has been unlike any he's ever taken in his life, that it's been cruel and vicious. And he said he just don't expect it here in my hometown. Well, Don Shula and the Dolphins, you mentioned Buffalo. They are... Looking down the road to a game in Buffalo next to last game of the regular season. Miami with four of the next five at home. Next week, a Monday night game home for the 49ers. And then at Indianapolis, home for Atlanta and Kansas City at Buffalo at St. Louis. The kickoff by Stoyanovic. And here is Megan. Leggett to the outside, looking to break it. Oh, what a return by Meggett. But only one second remains in the half. 64-yard return, Lewis Oliver was able to get him out of bounds. This is the exact same kind of a return that he made before. Remember, he kind of goes in there, gets lost in the crowd. He's not very big, probably can't even find him once he gets in there. Now, boom, bounce it to the outside. And he takes off and still shows he's got a little speed there. And for Matt Barr, now an attempt. This would be by far the longest this season, his longest to, to this date, 51 yards. This one would be about 55 or so. The official word is a 55-yard attempt for Matt Barr, who missed in his uh, last attempt in the second quarter, missing from 19, although Bowens had something to do with it, uh, got a piece of it, but a 55-yard attempt for Barr. There you see the career long for Matt, 54 yards. And Matt's been around a long time, and uh, that kick probably took place uh, many moons ago. Well, a 17-year veteran He's 39 years old. He is not considered to be a long-range specialist. No. But Bill Parcells just told him that he is. <laughs> Let's see if he can get it to the end zone. He has not hit a 50-yarder since 1991. This one is... Good! Wow! <laughs> Matt Barr from 55. Parcells, I told you you could do it. What are you so nervous about? 
Unbelievable. Matt Farr has tied the game at 10 as both clubs head off the field. And we will go to Greg Gumbel for the Domino's Pizza NFL on NBC Halftime Report.